Welcome, friend. We're so glad you joined us today. We thank you for your concern and for choosing our church uh, to worship. We thank you very much. You're always welcome here. Let us give you our order of service. We have Sunday school on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, and we have Sunday morning service starting at 12 o'clock. And on Wednesday at 6 o'clock, we have Bible study. And Friday at 6 o'clock, we have evangelistic service. And you're welcome to come to all of our services. And we're soliciting your prayer. Continue to pray for us, and we will pray for you. We are trying to get the word of God to the people. And we solicit your prayer, your support, in whatever way you can. Now let's go to our service that's already in progress.
good to us. Lord, you've been good to us down through the years. And we thank you. We thank you today. Lord, we thank you for life, a portion of health and strength. We thank you, Lord, for your many blessings you restore upon us. We thank you, Lord, for our families. We thank you for our leaders on today. Lord, we just thank you for our church and our church families. We ask that you be with us throughout this day, that you would lead us and guide us. Lord, and help us to walk in your way. Lord, give us strength. Give us strength to serve you. Give us strength to obey your will. Walk upright before you. Lord, we ask that you touch the sick everywhere. So I ask that you bless, that you will save and set you in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, somebody needs you. Somebody needs you today, Lord. Help us today. Help us. Lord, help us keep your commands. Help us, Lord. We need you as never before. Look down on us. Give us strength. Lord, give us strength. Bless our souls. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. To the bold eye in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that your spirit be in this place on today. Lord, we ask that you save, set free today in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask you forgiveness. God, for those who may not ask for themselves, but Lord, we ask that you forgiveness for everybody. We ask, Lord, that you keep us free and separated from everything that is contrary to your way to be. Lord, help us. Help us to obey your word. Help us to walk upright before you. Lord, we ask that you bless our leaders. Lord, and low and high. We pray, Lord, for our military people on today. We ask, Lord, that you would keep them from great mama day, from accidents seen and unseen. Lord, we need you in this world today. We need your help. We need your help today. Lord, help us. Help us. Help us, Lord. Help us. Bless us. We ask God that you bless our service. Bless the messenger and the messenger. We ask that you bless the saints everywhere. Lord, bless every church. On today, every anniversary, we pray your word to be high and lifted up on today. Lord, if you do these things, we'll always remember to give your name the honor and glory and all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, reading from the first chapter of Hebrews 1 through the sixth verses. God who has sound his time and has died with men, spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophet as in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he had appointed high of all things, by whom also he made the world, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our seed, set down on the right hand of the majestic on high, being made so much better than as he has by interpretation obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee, and again I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again when he bringeth in the first begotten unto the world, he said, and let all the angels of God worship him. We pray that the Lord will bless the reading and the hearers and doers of his word. Send it on down, send it on down, send it on down.
God praise down here. How are we going to give him praise in heaven? If we can't glorify and magnify his name right here, how are we going to glorify and magnify his name in heaven? Because that's a little, because that's just a little thought to think about. If I'm too stiff and everything that I can't clap my hands and I can't shout out, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, but then when I get to heaven, I think all of these things are going to be happening and I'm going to be a part of it. Not so. Because the Bible says you're ashamed to own me before me. Thank you for what you're doing. 
pray for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We are so grateful. We are so grateful to each of us uh, that God has smiled on us. I said smile. I didn't say frown. God has smiled on us. God has blessed us beyond many. God has done things for us that many wish had been done for them. God has extended our lives. We have not been consumed. And I don't know about you, but I'm grateful to God for what he has done. God has taken us through things that we when we were going through, we didn't see how it was going to be possible for us to even live, not, not to mention coming out victoriously. But God is just that kind of God, and nobody uh, can do us like God but God. And he said, I am a jealous God. At least he was honest. And most of us who asked us, are you jealous? Oh, no, I'm not jealous. Even in the church, you say, I'm not, you know what you be doing? Everybody, everybody got a little jealousy. And a little jealousy comes on with it because what's yours? You want it to be yours. Yeah, you, no, you just jealous. And we serve a jealous God. Right for the soul. Because God made us, He knows us, He blesses us 100%. So why should he share uh, with somebody else what he has made? If you, you're a good cook, you go in the kitchen and cook a beautiful dish, you don't want anybody else coming in there getting the praise and glory for what you prepared. Praise the Lord. You're jealous. Yeah, so we just thank God for that. I thank God for all that's here. Thank God for that one of our was a missionary, missionary Burrell, and my own evangelist, my own wife evangelist, uh, Jess Rose, Rita to Deacon Blair, and to all of us that are here. We thank God for the visitors, thank God for those that will be watching uh, by way of television, if not this day, a later day. And I want to use a short uh, subject. We need to praise God. We need to praise God. You know, when we have a cliche say when praises go up, blessings come down. Now if that being true, we need to praise the Lord. Because I think I'm right in saying that every one of us needs some more blessings from the Lord. If that be the case, we need to praise the Lord. Come on, clap your hands. Praise God. Thank you. We need to praise the Lord. Now, if someone can uh, turn to Psalms 146, I want somebody that's going to read it loud and clear and hurry up and take your time. <laughs> Praise God. Loud and clear and hurry up and take your time. Psalms 46. Man, we need to pray to the Lord. See, all of us, if we look back, we don't have to look back. <laughs> Just look back from last night until now. God yeah, has done I just from last night until now Next time, this that we need, time need to praise time. him just for that. How old do you have to be to praise the Lord? Old enough to talk. Old enough to reason. Old enough to know God has been good to you. There's no age limit. Raise your hand if you're going to read. All right. This test got a hand up. All right. 146. Now, how 
want to know if you walk around now talking to yourself. People don't look at you too kindly. They'll hit the panic button on you. There's a lady walking down the street. Dun, dun, dun. Three sound. What was that? Nine one one. You hey, now, don't you go out walking down the street talking to yourself. Don't do it. Men don't walk down the street talking to yourself. Children don't walk down the street talking to yourself. People will make a, uh, a courtesy call on you. Praise the Lord. You wonder where all those officers came from. But when you think of the goodness of God, now the psalmist here was talking to himself. Look what it said. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. You see what I'm saying? See, how many times you have to encourage yourself? Maybe you have. Maybe that's why you're so down now. You have to learn to encourage yourself. Now, I hope you didn't wait until you got to church this morning to realize that you need to praise the Lord. And if you did, it's not too late. It's not too late. We're going to give you a chance to praise the Lord. Now, when I say praise the Lord, now I'm talking to me and you ought to be talking to you. Praise ye the Lord, O my soul. Let me hear you say that. Praise ye the Lord. Pra oh, my soul. Well, let's read the whole thing. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord who? O my soul. That's you. Now, when I say you need to praise the Lord, you are talking to you. Tell your soul you need to praise the Lord because God has blessed you beyond where he has blessed somebody. Praise the Lord. Now, you woke up this morning with a mind. I hope. I know you did because you're here. You woke up with a mind to come to church. That's something to praise the Lord for. There's a whole lot of people woke up this morning, but they didn't, they didn't have their mind nowhere around the Lord. But you woke up this morning with your mind on coming to church and to praise the Lord. And you took time to fix yourself up like you were going before the Lord. You can't just come to the Lord any kind of way. Even if you don't have the three strands of hat, call them and make them come together. Praise the Lord. You don't want to go on north, east, and west. You are going to praise the Lord. And God is looking for our best praise. Not just old nonchalant. Praise the Lord. Yeah, okay, you said that. Uh, praise you, Lord. No, you be glad. David said, I was what? I was glad when he said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Now, if you come in this sanctuary by yourself, you still would say, I was there when you said unto us, I'm here, the Lord is here, isn't that us? Any two people, me and somebody else, that's us. You and somebody else, or some other high being, that's us. You, you drive your car alone, you're not really alone. If you're in tune with God, God sometimes God is driving that, that car. It has to be us. Some of us guys are so crazy. If it hadn't been for God, it didn't help, help control that car. Then it would have been a terrible thing. So praise the Lord with us. Everybody in here has a right to praise the Lord. Yes. While I live, will I praise the Lord? When?
See, a lot of people think, well, I'm going to praise the Lord when I get my meal. Well, you may hold your praise the rest of, you know, you may never get your meal. Well, I'm going to praise the Lord when I get my house paid for. You may not live to get your house paid for. Well, I'm going to praise the Lord so my children get grown. They may not live to get grown. But while you live, the Bible says, while I live, I will praise the Lord. Yeah.
So no need to call him up grandpa now. And he be dead 20 years. I won't consult with grandpa. No, no, no. It doesn't work. His thoughts perish. Grandmama's thoughts perish. When you and I breathe our last breath, the thoughts that we have, the knowledge that we have, perish. Somebody said some of the best ideas, some of the best inventions are in the graveyard. People invented in their mind, but they never brought it to fruition. When they died, their thoughts died with them. If you could wake them up and pick their brains and get out of that knowledge, everything they do and didn't have a chance, you'd be one rich brother or one rich sister. But since you can't do it, you better do all you can while you can so your thoughts won't perish without you being a blessing to somebody. I didn't know God didn't make you just for you. God made you for himself, but he also made you and I to be a blessing to somebody else while we live. It's time not for going to somebody's funeral. It's all the all friends and relatives that want to say something lined up. They lined up all the way around the church. People that don't even know the person. I don't know them, but I, I heard them up and they're going to talk five minutes about how good somebody lives and they don't even know the person. They need to take a seat. Praise the Lord. And whatever you got to say that's edifying, when should you say it? Now while the person lives. I can't help you after you did. Pastor Rick, I want you to come preach my son or my daughter or my husband or my wife's uh, funeral. Well, I want you to preach. I said, what they say? No, they never went to church in their life. But I want you to fix them up. You already fixed up. Fix up and go to hell. Just right for going to hell. Because if you don't get it right in this life, no preacher can help you there. Hello. All I can say Who is this? Is Celeste, is this you, you? If you don't straighten up, you're going to wind up just like this. <laughs> One What's preacher said he was invited to do a eulogy. Said he got up, made his preliminary. Said the man yeah. had to live now. Just a grand rascal. He got up and everybody looked for him to, to uh, preach. Go down, pray. I mean, get down. So he oh, got up and he said, walking, And in hell, he lifted up his eyes and pointed for the undertaker. Oh. Now, you know, there's a lot of disappointing huh? people in there. So what if, that's what it's saying. If you don't leave oh, right I've been now, to, I got to go. Oh, we try to make the family feel I got to go to Easter Well, we got to stop doing that. We, we got to get it through. It through. If you don't live for God, then where are you going? I don't get up there and lie and pull people and say, oh, they were wonderful. I got to have something. I never had no problem either. You know what? They didn't say it. If you don't come to church, I don't have no problem either. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie, Father. I got to let the truth drop wherever it falls. Now, if the truth hurts you, who falls in that? I told the truth for you. If I saw you kill a man, I'd say he's a killer. I don't try to tell the truth. He's a killer. She's a killer. Praise the Lord. So live so long. No, my name is good. No, I ain't got it. Somebody else can be inspired. Yes, read the word. <laughs> she just as sweet as she can be down there in Atlanta. <laughs> now, anybody that in the world, if you trust in the Almighty God, count G O D. That's what it's talking about. Nobody owns God by himself. But, but you can say, My God, but you trust him. Then if you are my God, and you don't trust if you're not representing right. You misrepresent the truth. In other words, I'm saying you what? Thank you. Say it. That's right. You get up there. Give me honor to God, who is the head of my life. People get up in the same chair. If, you, if God is the head of your life, why do you do some of the things you do? Is God mixed up? God not mixed up? Well, why are we mixed up if God is the head of 
of the land. Why do we go to work and can't come to church if God is the head of our land? Oh, he says to God of the workforce. He can see to it that we get to, to, to work in that, but he can't see to it that we get to church in that. Praise God. And that would be a limited God. Praise God. So we need to put our trust in God who can, who wants to, and who will come to our rescue if we serve. God will never let us down. If we serve him, see everything is a great big if, if our ways please the Lord, we can ask for whatever I want, whatever we want. But I said if. Now, what he's saying, if your ways don't please the Lord, out of his mercy, he just might, but he's not obligated to. But if you live right, God is obligated to come to your rescue. If you put your whole trust in God and depend entirely on God, God will take you through uh, diseases to sicknesses that the doctors don't even know what it is. But God will be able to take you through it. I, I know because he has done it for me and he is doing it for me. Everybody that's here got some condition in your mind. There's nobody sitting here or out there that does not have something wrong with you. And if you think like that, I know there's something wrong with you. You're not using good sense. Everybody got something wrong with you. We are living with things that other people been dead and gone. But God has blessed us. Praise God. You say, well, I'm not completely delivered. Life ain't over. Continue to call on God. Continue to trust in God. And continue to believe in Him. And continue to please Him. And I guarantee God will make a difference in your life. And quit saying to other people all the time, pray for me. That's good. You should say, pray with me. See, because if you tell me to pray for you, that means you don't have to pray. Because I'm praying for you. But you need to ask somebody to pray with you. Because you need to be praying too. Because you got the problem. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You ask somebody, how do you know they want you to get away? I want you to pray. I believe in your prayer. I believe if you pray, I'm going to get up for you. They may, they may not want you to get up. They may pray. And if you don't love me, I, I believe you wouldn't pray for me. Don't even mention my name to God if you hate me. Because God may honor your prayer. You may say, Lord, take him out. And God be on your breath. Praise God. So put your trust in God. We need to do what? Praise the Lord. Yes. In other words, the God that we are praising is the God that knows everything, can do everything, and who has already made everything. Be stupid. We don't serve a stupid God. God can't be stupid. Look what he did. If you think he's stupid, look at you. Look how he made you. <laughs> there you go again. Now you might say he was asleep, but he's not stupid. God made you an upright. He made us that way. And of course, through the course of time, we know the story what Adam did. He messed us up. But we still can make it right again. We go to God, we have to get forgiven for the things that we have done. See, Jesus died for the sins of the world. And if we accept Jesus in the morning of our sin, that he raised us all that past us, then we are only accountable for what we do from here on in. You see what I'm saying? Yeah.
See, God, your God, I, I read a slogan somewhere where it said a child that is often brought up in the church house will seldom be brought up in the courthouse. What does that mean? If we train up a child to fear God and to reverence God, then that fear, if we don't deviate from it, will keep us on the right path. I mean, know we're living in a dangerous little town. This is a dangerous town. But don't you know God has blessed you and I all these years to live in? You know, it had to be God. It had to be God because the enemy is on the rampage. But it's, it's God that we trust in that preserves us and give us a mind to do better things. So whatever we do in life, we need to learn to put God first in our life. And we need to learn to give him praise. Everybody stand on your feet, just give him praise. Just for a moment. Just tell God. Just tell him thank you. I thank you for what you feel. I thank you. Praise the Lord. The children need to thank God. The adults need to thank God. Everybody needs to thank God for what God has done. Think about your sickness. Think about your healing. Think about your inconvenience. Could be work. Just tell him thank you anyway. In spite of the situation. I thank the Lord. Anyway, you may be seated. We may be seated. God, God is a good God. God is a kind God. God is a God. Now, nobody else, there's nobody that we know that would know all they know about us and yet love us. Some things we don't even tell one another because we're afraid they won't appreciate us. They won't love us, so we keep it a secret. But God knows everything that he is to know about you and I, and he still loves us. He loves us unconditionally. I can't stop God from loving you. You can't stop God from loving me. God loves you and I in spite of us. We haven't pleased him all the time, but he loves us. So we need to learn to give God praise for what he has done. And I say all the time, quit looking at what somebody else has and compare them with yourself and think they are better than you think. They have more clout with God than you. Anytime you compare yourself with someone that you think more of than you think of yourself, the longer you will be depressed because you feel like God has forgotten you. But God loves you. And you tell yourself, praise the Lord, oh my soul. Because the enemy will come and make you feel like you have nothing to be thankful for. You say, I went to bed broke, I got up broke. I went all week broke. Well, you sure all praise God. Because if you went a whole week broke and God still sustained you, my Lord, what do you, that's all he's done for the people who got money. You ought to learn to thank God in the darkest of situations. Look on the bright side. Sometimes it seems like there is no bright side. Well, then look on the lighter side of the dark side. You ought to be able to find something to thank God for. Praise God. If you don't have but one leg, thank God for that one leg. Could be no leg. Thank God. I was looking on TV the other day and I saw a lady, she was married. She had no, no hands at all. Both off. And I believe on Oprah's show. And Oprah saw to it that she got a nice home to live in. That's one thing that she wanted a home for her family. And she was full grown, but she didn't have any hands. And I just looked at that and I said, how blessed we are. And we do more complain. Oh, we need to stop that. We complain too much. You got ten things, and let one of them start. Oh, 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 and just crap about this. Oh, this thing, this one thing, it's just killing me. Now, what is the rest of the nine? They wipe you on out. We need to thank God instead of putting all the negative attention on this one. Why don't we thank God for these other nine that are out there? We need to look on the right side of that. We walk and I can't get up. One of my knees bothers me. Well, one, well, what if the other one bothers me? Walk light on the weak one and step hard on the, on the strong one. You still can make it. And quit complaining so much. I better know some people that complain. You don't have to look for them. You don't have to look for them. <laughs> you can say, quit complaining on my soul. 
praise God. God has been good to us. God has been good. We need to look around us. We need to look around us. Praise the Lord. You might have had a hard time getting here, but once you got here, we try to have a comfortable seat for you. We try to have a temperature just right for you. Man, it's good. Now, once you get back in your car, you're on your own. Praise God. We're going to look out for you as long as you're here. So tell the Lord, thank you. Praise God. I thank you for my life. Thank you for my health. Thank you for my strength. And parents should thank God for your children. He said, why? Woo, Pastor. You don't worry. You just don't have no idea what they put me through. Well, just think about it. If God hadn't given you strength, they never would be here in the first place. Think about that, because God could have let you die in the process. So he didn't do it. So then when you look at your children, and they are healthy, then that lets you know God is smiling on you. Your child could have been born, and when you say ill deformed, you know, physically deformed, or physically challenged, but you got some beautiful, handsome, healthy children. So you ought to thank God for that. Praise the Lord. And you ought to thank God that God allowed you to live to see your children growing up. They haven't grown up yet, but they're on the process. But you need to thank God for that. Praise God. The children have a mind. Now, I know you coerced them, but they still wind up with a mind to come. And you ought to thank God for that. So with that being said, let our soul, let our mind, and everything that is within us, Praise the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. There may be somebody that has a special need right now. And you have a little problem with it. If you wanted to stand for prayer, and then we're going further. Praise God. Praise God. That's right. That's right. That's right. These that are standing. These that are standing. God, we ask that you bless each one of them. Some have problems in their body. Some probably have maybe their minds. It is not confused, but it's weighted down to some things that weigh heavy on their heart. They're, they're not worried, but they're all the concern. God let them know that everything is going to be all right with God. They are in good hands. You are with you. You are able to do everything. And so they just need to take time to praise the Lord for what He is doing and what He's going to do and for what He's already done. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. And a, a, amen. Now while you're yet standing, some people may not be as closely related to God, as closely connected to God as we feel like we ought to be. And if you're that person, uh, you have a special need. You may, you may not even have a church home and design a church home. Whatever, if there's a special concern like that, would you just raise your right hand? It's your right hand. All right. And Sister Correa, her husband, is not doing uh, too well physically. We're going to pray for him. Okay? All right. And then we'll remember him in prayer. And if you don't have a church home, keep in mind, we have a reserved place here just for you. Don't have a church home. It's just, it's been here over 100 years and we'll be here waiting on you because we're not going to wait another 100 years, but <laughs> praise God, but we have room for you in Jesus' name. Bless, bless uh, uh, Sister Correa's husband in the name of Jesus. Bless uh, Deacon Blair's family. He has two sons, two, son, two sons, Sister Stephanie. And uh, whoever else is sick, bless them. Sister Standra, yes, God knows all of it. Thank you. Thank you for watching our service and for visiting us. We're so glad you came and look forward to seeing you the next time. But remember, now we solicit your continued prayer, your continued support, that we may continue to put this program on the airway. And until the next time, we are saying to you, thank you, and to God be the glory.
Welcome, friend. We are so glad you joined us today. We thank you for your concern and for choosing our church uh, to worship. We thank you very much. You're always welcome here. Let us give you our order of service. We have Sunday school on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, and we have Sunday morning service starting at 12 o'clock. And on Wednesday at 6 o'clock, we have Bible study. And Friday at 6 o'clock, we have evangelistic service. And you're welcome to come to all of our services. And we're soliciting your prayer. Continue to pray for us, and we will pray for you. We are trying to get the word of God to the people. And we solicit your prayer, your support, in whatever way you can. Now let's go to our service that's already in progress. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. To me, he is so wonderful. To me, he is so wonderful. To me, he is so wonderful. Because he first loved me. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh. Thank 
you, Lord, for your many blessings you bestow upon us. We thank you, Lord, for our families. We thank you for our leaders on today. Lord, we just thank you for our church and our church families. We ask that you be with us throughout this day, that you would lead us and guide us. Lord, and help us to walk in your way. Lord, give us strength. Give us strength to serve you, Lord. Give us strength to obey your will. Walk up right before you. Lord, we ask that you touch the sick everywhere. So I ask that you bless, that you will save and set you in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, somebody needs you. Somebody needs you today, Lord. Help us today. Help us. Lord, help us keep your commands. Help us, Lord. We need you as never before. Look down on us. Give us strength. Lord, give us strength. Bless our souls. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. To the bold eye in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that your spirit be in this place on today. Lord, we ask that you save, set free today in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask you forgiveness. Lord, for those who may not ask for themselves, but Lord, we ask in your forgiveness for everybody. We ask, Lord, that you keep us free and separated from everything that is contrary to your way to God. Lord, help us. Help us to obey your word. Help us to walk upright before you. Lord, we ask that you bless our leaders. Lord, in low and high. We pray, Lord, for our military people on today. We ask, Lord, that you would keep them from great mama day, from accident seen and unseen. Lord, we need you in this world today. We need your help. We need your help today. Lord, help us. Help us. Help us, Lord. Help us. Bless us. We ask, Lord, that you bless our service. Bless the messenger and the messenger. We ask that you bless the saints everywhere. Lord, bless every church. On today, every anniversary, we pray your word to be high and lifted up on today. Lord, if you do these things, we'll already remember to give your name the honor and glory and all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen again. Uh, reading from the first chapter of Hebrews 1 through the sixth verse. God who had sound his time and had died with men, spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophet as in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he had appointed high of all things, by whom also he made the world, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sin, and sat down on the right hand of the majestic on high. He is made so much better than the angel, as he has, by interpretation, obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee, and again I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten unto the world, he said, and let all the angels of God worship him. We pray that the Lord will bless the reading and the hearers and doers of his word. Send it on down. 